Has anybody else noticed that there has just been a lot of negative sentiment recently for CGC comic book grading? Uh. back again for another video. Thanks very much for joining us. Hope everybody had an amazing weekend. Man, I was on my YouTube. I was on my YouTube. I sound like I'm just getting older. I'm about to turn 43 and it's really showing. I was on my YouTube and I noticed that there was a variety, a barrage of, of videos from some of my favorite comic book YouTubers and they were all along a similar theme and that theme was CGC Sucks. Not really, but kind of, a kind of, a little bit. CGC comic book grading. I want to talk about this because CGC, man, they have had a rough last six months. I think part of this, a large part of this, frankly, is, is just the fact that they are number one in the comic book grading space. Beckett's version, CBCS, they're really on the ropes, especially now that CGC has acquired JSA and now they can handle autograph authentication, whereas that was kind of the bread and butter for the Beckett comic book rating, and it's just looking like that's, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there'll be people that'll still be loyal to, to Beckett, to CBCS, but I have to assume that a lot of that business is now going to go to CGC and JSA. Is JSA great name in the space, popular. And I know you might be thinking, like, watching this, man, this guy really just hopes that CGC fails. It's actually the opposite. I do not want CGC to fail at all. I think third-party grading is essential in this comic book marketplace. And I know people will argue with me, free the book from the tomb, let it swim or fly or whatever the hell people say. But, you know, the real truth is, is for people to have confidence, especially with us all buying online now, either through the Home Shopping Network of whatnot or one of these, or on eBay, which a lot of sales occur on eBay, or at an auction house, Heritage, etc., you have to have some sort of a third party to give a somewhat of an okay, in my mind, for a large majority of people to want to buy at these prices. And I know what some might think is, you know what though, if we get rid of all the third party grading, then the prices will just go down and we can all afford Amazing Fantasy 15 again. It just won't work like that. It doesn't work like that. They're gonna be trying to sell you that book that's not in a slab for the same price or about, or maybe even a lot more, than what it would be in a slab. Except it would have, you know, page 29's missing and you don't know it. Or there's some restoration on there, you have no idea. Oh, there's a staple that, a new staple was added in. Hell, I wouldn't know that. I'm not an expert. I need to have a third party. So I want CGC to be successful. I do think there's definitely room for a competitor in the space for comic book rating, for sure. But I want CGC to be successful. They are the most trusted and the most popular in the space currently, and we need that third-party authentication. I'm a big believer in third-party grading. For all of their faults and all of their warts and everything else, got to have it. Have to have it, or there's just no confidence. People think there's no confidence. Now, I think it's funny. The CGC scandal happens, and people are like, oh, you know, they've lost confidence. There's no confidence. Well, the auction houses would tell you differently because people are still spending huge, huge money on slab books. One thing that would take confidence away in a second is take all those slab books out of their holders and let, let it go. Let it go wild west like it was 30 years ago when I was a kid, like it was 1990. You're arguing with a dealer about the quality of the book or the quality of the trading card. No, we're not going back. We're not going back. But man, if I look at the news... We go back, Slab Scandal, of course, goes back to November, December time frame, and every, I think every YouTuber that has a YouTube channel, not even just comic book ones, made a video about it, including myself. I mean, it was huge, huge news in the space, and there was even some comic YouTubers that were slow to get that video out. We, we, we won't forget you, we won't forget you. I'm only playing, only playing. Everybody got, got word out on this. Everybody got word out on the CGC Scandal stuff. It looks like they've settled with some of these people. There's still some lawsuits going. CGC's been active in the courtroom, putting out a list of affected books and going after money for victims and that sort of thing. So CGC's done the right thing. There's still work to be done here. Of course, I think until they have more of a high security slab, I, I just think that there's gonna be more people that are trying to, to weasel their way into fraudulent type activities with these, with these slabs. But CGC has reacted well, but there's just been some things lately. The next one. 
the 9.9 pre-screen. The 9.9 pre-screen, I thought this was kind of interesting because now it's really opened the door. We have, what was it, a Hulk 181 or an X-Men, giant size X-Men 1, and we have it with a first 9.9 that's for sale. And then you look at it and it's like, ah, you know, is it that much different than the 9.8s? And so then you're wondering like, okay, are they easing off on their grading? Are they gonna make it, are they making it easier to get, because 9.9 and especially 10.0, forget about it, forget about it. Now, modern books, okay, you see some 9.9s, okay, that's fine, I mean, new, newer books. But Giant Size X-Men and Hulk 181 and that sort of stuff, you're not really seeing that there. So now all of a sudden we're starting to see 9.9s. And I was watching, it was West Coast Devenger, Devenger, I never know how to say his channel, but he was showing a book that was not a modern book, not an ultra modern book. I think he said it was 25 or 30 years old. And I thought he was gonna unveil a 9.9. He unveils a 10 on that puppy. He got a 10 and he did say, hey, look, I didn't have like my YouTube name on when I submitted it. So it went in anonymously and got a 10. But it kind of reminds me a little bit of what Beckett has done in trading cards. And it's starting to get easier, more easier is what I almost said, easier to get 10s, to get BGS 10s. Beckett's been giving out more, they've been more liberal giving out their BGS 10s for trading cards, which a lot of the Pokemon card collectors, the trading game card collectors, they, they enjoy it, they like it. Sports card collectors are still a little bit weary about it. But again, we, we go back here. And so the big question mark, I think, is, is CGC starting to loosen up the requirements to get these high grades, which then, of course, it begs the question, okay, what are the 9.8s worth now? Is my 9.8 basically a 9.6? And my 9.6 is basically a 9.4 and down the line, like now 9.8's trash. You know, it's like 9.9 nine or nothing. Or then, then it would be 10 O's. I was joking with Newsstand 99 Manu. He's got to change his, his name to Newsstand 10 O, maybe 11 O at some point. Because 9.9s, I don't know if those are going to be special anymore. The 9.9 pre-screen. Then we have Swaggle. Swaggle even comes out. Friendly Neighborhood Swaggle comes out with a video about Did CGC Damage My Books? Question mark. That's not good. And this is something actually that all grading companies deal with. Whether his were damaged or not while they were there, who knows. But this happens with all grading companies. But maybe I missed it before, but I haven't seen Swaggle put out a video quite like that. But again, maybe I missed it. Maybe six months ago or a year ago, he put one out talking about, did CGC damage my book? Uh. But again, you have a larger channel talking about quality control, you know, what's going on over there, question marks. And then we got to top it off with my boy, Sticky Goose. Sticky Goose Comics coming in hot with a recent promo video that CGC did, and he did actually play it. And I was thinking like, oh, maybe he's just going like hard just for like no particular reason. But no, it really was pretty awful. CGC did this promo video, but you could just tell that it was all kind of staged, like line by line staged up. It was not good. It was not a good promo video. And again, I think that when you're the largest, when you're number one in the space, expectations are high. They're just higher. They're higher than all the other companies because all the other companies are not CGC. You know, so expectations are going to be high. Everything's under a microscope. And the promo video, it came off a little bit short. So again, where do we go from here? And is CGC going to be able to kind of, they're fighting wars on all fronts. They're under attack. It's all night. It's all time. Get it for this city. Get it for each other. We got to smell greatness. And we got to finish strong. Who that? Who that? But I will say a lot of it self-inflicted. You know, some of it is just stuff that happens at grading companies anyway. Like the whole, did CDC damage my book? Collectibles get damaged at all of these grading companies on occasion. It's not, it's not common. It's not super common, but it does happen. We all know that. That's part of the risk of us sending in a collectible to a grading company. There is a, a chance that it could get damaged. But then you kind of, you, you couple these things all together. Slab gate, slab scandal, all the weaselly stuff that's going on. People mixing in books in and out of slabs. That That's a that's a biggie. That's a big one. They're working to combat it. Then you've got the question marks around 9.9 .9 pre-screening. Are they getting loose with the requirements? What does that mean for my giant size X-Men 8.5 number one? Is that trash now? Is that trash? Trash? Friends, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Stay healthy, stay awesome, and I will talk to you again later.